What does it mean for an object to have negative mass? It sounds pretty silly. Mass is the amount of stuff you have. How can you have less than zero stuff? It sounds like science fiction, but even then, I remember the sci-fi TV show Andromeda bringing it up once and saying that negative mass was like a planet with a negative number of moons. And yet, in physics, you sometimes find negative numbers sitting where mass figures should be. One simple way this can happen is if a region of space has less mass in it than the area around it. Just like a helium balloon is lighter than air, and would even register a negative weight on a spring scale. One common example of negative mass, or rather negative energy, is the Casimir effect, a phenomenon where two metal plates very close together block some of the quantum waves that normally fill space, especially the long wavelength ones, but even some of the shorter ones, because they require a whole number of wavelengths to fit between the plates. This creates a relative negative energy density and thus negative pressure that pulls them together. And this has been observed in the laboratory, so it can happen in real life. But there are also stranger theories of physics that predict the existence of exotic matter that just has negative mass. But when you think about negative mass, you have to wonder, what does that actually look like? The hallmark of negative mass is that in Newton's second law, F equals ma, it puts a negative sign in the equation, F equals minus ma. That means a negative mass accelerates in the opposite direction to the forces acting on it. And that seems totally incoherent. I mean, you push on an object and it comes toward you? How can it do that if your hand is in the way? Almost all of the explanations of negative mass I've seen completely sidestep this question. Instead, they talk about how it works with gravity. Unlike electric charges, with gravity, like masses attract and move toward each other. If one mass is negative, we have to reverse the sign and they repel. But while positive mass is repelled from negative mass, remember that negative mass moves in the wrong direction, so it's actually attracted to the positive mass. This means that the negative mass chases the positive mass, and they both accelerate off to the speed of light. Since the total mass is zero, this doesn't violate conservation of energy. But this doesn't explain what would happen if you tried to pick up a solid object with negative mass. Now you may be thinking, solid objects aren't really solid, they're made of atoms, which are mostly empty space. And that's true, but that's not how we do physics. Normally in physics, especially if you don't understand something, you start with the simplest possible model and work up from there, like a block sitting on a table. And you occasionally see this with negative mass. Like sometimes you'll see people talk about how a negative mass resting on the ground would actually shoot clean through the earth. More on that later. But even if that's right, it still doesn't solve the problem of objects passing through each other. You never see negative mass talked about at the most basic Physics 101 level. What does that actually look like? That's what I wanted to find out through the process of making this video, to see how it would behave in situations we're familiar with. If you've taken Physics 101, you'll surely have learned about elastic collisions. These are collisions where, like these blocks, objects bounce off each other without losing any kinetic energy. For example, a super ball bounces almost as high as you dropped it from because it's close to being perfectly elastic. Of course, to be perfectly elastic, we have to do the experiment in a frictionless vacuum. This is the kind of approximation that physics, and especially Physics 101, is famous for. And when we do this, we don't have to worry about forces pushing and pulling, because in a perfectly elastic collision, the blocks are only in contact for an instant, zero time. We don't have to worry about how they bounce. We can just take as a given that they conserve momentum and kinetic energy and that they can't pass through each other. Then we can just solve for the final velocities and see what happens. This seems like the kind of toy model we can use to figure out how negative mass should behave on the simplest level. The question is, if we just plug a negative mass into the equations for an elastic collision, 
do we get a solution where the boxes don't pass through each other? And the answer is yes, but it's weird. Let's see what happens when we collide a small negative mass block with a larger positive mass block. The negative block appears to bounce close to normally, but the positive block, which would normally move in the other direction, moves backwards in the direction the negative block came from. If we were looking at the forces involved here, we would say that the negative block exerted a negative force on the positive block. Let's compare that result with the normal situation where both masses are positive. In the normal case, the larger block moves off to the right, but hit it with a negative mass and it moves to the left. And note that I can reverse the signs on all the masses and still get the same result. Negative on negative behaves exactly the same as positive on positive. It's opposite masses that give weird results. But it is a weird result, and it's not obvious why the blocks are moving this way, even though that's what the equations say. To see what's really going on, it's easier to look at a slightly different problem. A perfectly inelastic collision happens when two objects collide and lose the maximum possible amount of kinetic energy, which happens when they stick together. When one block hits a second with the same mass, for example, they stick together and move forward at half the speed, because the combined mass is twice as great and momentum has to be conserved. Let's see what happens in an inelastic collision where one of the blocks has a negative mass. We still aren't worrying about forces at this point. We're just assuming that the blocks can stick together without any trouble. In this setup, when the big block hits a positive mass target, it slows down. But when it hits a negative mass target, it speeds up. Why? Because the combined mass is smaller than the big block alone. So for momentum to be conserved, it has to move faster. If the two masses are close to being equal and opposite, the combined mass is very small and they move very fast. And if they're exactly equal and opposite, So that's a bad sign. If the physics starts throwing divide by zero errors, there's a good chance you're doing something wrong. But hey, this is just a toy model. And for macroscopic objects, the masses are never going to cancel exactly. So let's keep going. You actually get pretty similar results from elastic collisions. Even though they don't stick, the fact that the combined mass is smaller than the big block means that the big block can speed up and still conserve momentum. The collision transfers a negative amount of momentum to the negative block, leaving the positive block with more. Turn it around so that the small block is moving, and we have our original weird result. The negative block transfers its negative momentum to the positive block, negative meaning pointing to the left. Since it also has to bounce off, it winds up with positive momentum, and with its negative mass, moves to the left faster than the positive block. Now, what about that shooting through the earth problem I mentioned? This is related to the original your hand is in the way problem. A normal block doesn't fall through the ground because the ground is pushing up on it. That's called the normal force. And in fact, by Newton's third law, there are two of them. The ground pushing on the block and the block pushing on the ground. How does that work with negative mass? it seems like it would make the block accelerate down through the Earth. But I'm not so sure. We can get some clues here by looking at walls. In Physics 101, we can just treat a wall as an object with infinite mass so it can't move. And it turns out that if you collide a negative mass block with a much larger target, it behaves more similarly to a positive one. And if you use an immovable wall, They're identical. Why should this be? Shouldn't the wall exert a leftward force on the block, making it accelerate to the right, through the wall, 
Well, remember that with the elastic collisions, the negative block can actually exert a negative force, which maybe even makes sense since, you know, it has negative mass. It's not clear how a push could be a negative force. After all, the equations for an elastic collision don't mention forces at all. But conservation of energy says it works. So, if the negative block pushes the wall with a negative, that is, leftward force at the moment of impact, the wall would exert a rightward force on the block in return, causing it to move to the left. By analogy, we can make a hypothesis that a negative block can rest on the ground just the same as a positive one, if the normal forces are also negative. Are they negative? Normal forces aren't magic. They're caused by electrons, but we'll need to work up to that level. Remember, all of this is the Physics 101 version. It's a toy model, and as we say in physics, all models are wrong. Some models are useful. Real objects aren't perfectly rigid or perfectly elastic, let alone both. They deform under pressure. This is the Physics 102 treatment, where you have to think about the properties of materials. But we can actually bring it back to Physics 101 by using springs. But for that, you'll have to wait for the next video.